Defenders of the White City. Today we are going to play Gondor against the Hard Army on a beautiful map mirroring stream, which is a brand new map added from the patch 2.22. And we are only recruiting some soldiers and tower guards and the captain of Gondor himself, Boromir. The mirroring stream was known for being one of the borders between the kingdoms of Gondor and Rohan. And look at the new design, which you can also download tomorrow from the link in the description down below. We are almost done with the version 2. I am just testing every single change we've implemented and making sure that everything is working perfectly. And Mering Stream, once again, is a brand new map which was existing already in the Battle for Middle Earth 2. And we were able to convert that and retexture that for our own game, Battle for Middle Earth 1. With the help of the Hobbit Peregrine Took, we will be creeping the goblin lay at the top side, at the roof. And we have two, you know, two uh, settlements around your castle. That means you can start with two farms in this map. But after creeping the goblin layers, you can get more and more and more and more settlements. Go, go, nice. Alright, so the plan is simple. We will first of all get some more, you know, money collected, get some more settlements inside and outside of the base. And then we will start recruiting some soldiers and tower guards and hopefully this is going to be enough to beat the heart army which is potentially going to be i mean there are some goblins also on the other side but i don't see the enemy faction just yet hopefully it's not going to be mordor or isengard because they are hard against gondor especially when you are playing only with soldiers and tower guards i believe the easiest one is going to be rohan but it's going to be isengard holy guacamole okay that's going to be a tough one now because Isengard Uruks are a counter to the soldiers and also to the tower guards. They are faster and stronger than our infantry units. That's why we need to get the upgrades purchased as soon as possible. Remember in Battle for Middle of 1 upgrades have a huge impact on the game. Barak's Blacksmith. We were cash looting quite a lot. Let's pick up the heal. We gotta use it eventually very soon for the Hobbit. Let's use it. Nice. We were able to save Peregrine Took. Let's focus down the lair with the soldiers and hopefully with the help of Pepin we will be able to defend ourselves. However, I would not like to lose a farm just yet. It's just too early. We will have to keep this farm protected as long as we potentially can. Micro with the Hobbit and try to cloak him, please. One more. Move. Cloak. No! No, you full of a duck. What are you doing? So slow. I mean, I'm just blaming him. It was me who was so slow. All right, at least we were getting the creep. That's good. Uh, we need to revive Peregrine Took, of course, build a well for the sustain and build more and more blacksmiths inside the castle. And if you are wondering why blacksmiths and not farms, it's simple. Because blacksmiths are giving you the, the steel bonus, which is going to make our upgrades later on cheaper. Cheap upgrades is essential for the Gondor faction. You can also pick up the Elven Woods now for additional armor. Okay. Oh, we will lose this fight, am I right? Yeah. We also need to recruit Boromir as soon as possible. Boromir has now a new ability, by the way, in the patch 2.22. It's called Glory of Gondor, which is going to work like the pillage from Lourdes or the outlaw leadership from um, Elma. So basically, once Boromir is hitting level 6, you will get money for killing enemy units, which is already existing in Rohan with Elma, for Isengard with Lourdes, and for Mordor with the pillage or with the scavenger from the spellbook. Okay, I don't know if we can win this fight though. Even on the Alvin Wood, it's going to be kind of tricky. But once Boromir is on the field, it should be way, way easier for us to win those fights. Especially once we get the upgrades purchased, like Heavy Armor and Forge Blades, we should be able to outclass the Uruks. Remember, I mean, also in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, you are of course able to buy upgrades for your units, but they are by far not as important or as... Oh my goodness, man. You're full of a duck. Once again... They are by far not as important or as impactful as in Battle for Middle Earth 1. In Battle for Middle Earth 1, upgrades mean so much. So basically, quality goes over quantity. Come on, Boromir, the captain. Do your thing. Look at the new picture from Boromir, guys. He looks serious this time, you know? He's like, I ain't dying this time. We have also heal. We need to use it for the soldiers to give them some sustain. Now is the time to heal them. And now you also will get the chance to recruit some tower guards. We also need to revive Pippin for the, for the second time, unfortunately. Because, you know, P 
Pippin is quite underrated. Pippin and Mary, they are dealing actually great amount of damage if you can keep them protected. If you can keep them safe and by throwing rocks, you can keep the distance. You can, you know, deal some additional great amount of damage to your opponent. Alright, so Tower Guards, of course, are a meme unit. They are not the best units in the game, especially... I mean, the way the pipe units are working in Battle for Middle Earth 1, they are very situational, and you will uh, actually only need them when you have to deal with a massive amount of cavalry units. In this case, for example, the ideal situation would be if this Isengard army would uh, decide to recruit some Warp Riders, then the Tower Guards would be the best units. But if he just goes for the Uruks and for the Crossbowmen, uh, tower guards are going to be just a waste of money they cost a lot they are the most expensive pikemen in the game they cost 400 each with that they are more expensive than the uruk pikemen from isengard and the rune soldiers from the mordor faction and they are also way slower than the uruk pikemen so uh, but they are tanky the good thing about the tower guards is that they are not that squishy unlike the uruk pikemen against anything else you know like basically there is not a clear weakness of this um, tower guards they are quite beefy against fire against arrows against literally every source of damage especially when you use the shield fall formation you will lose 50 percent of your movement speed but you will get 40 percent tankier so with borome being around with leadership and with the alvin wood on the ground we will have lots of damage and also armor leadership to make those tower guards tank for minutes and minutes and minutes. Oh no, we lost the soldier battalion, but it's it's okay, I guess. Not the end of the world. We have great amount of resources. What I would also like to do now is actually focus a bit on the map control. There are two outposts on the map mating stream and we will have to capture them both. And the way you want to play against a hard army is you want to make sure that you have the map control because if you will ever give up the map control, the army will get just too much money and at some point of the game, they will start spamming siege weapons on you all the time. And siege weapons are extremely annoying for the tower guards to deal with because once again their clear weakness is the lack of mobility they are quite slow and you cannot dodge the incoming damage nor can you catch those ballistas before they can wipe out your entire army but on the alvin wood we can stall the fight quite a long time now with heavy armor we are also beefy and more tanky with forge plates we will also have great amount of uh, damage output and then we can even take a risk and go inside the enemy castle eventually and take down a couple of the structures. Ideally, we should be focusing down the Uruk pit. By destroying the Uruk pits, we will cut his production of the units. And with the tower guards, the forge plates and heavy armor, we can creep this work layer in literally no time. Soldiers can also creep the work layer at the bottom side with forge plates and heavy armor. Once again, upgrades have a huge impact on the game for every single faction. Or leadership so it's either experience leadership or upgrades now that's actually pretty nice so we can take down the uruk pit and after that we can even try to take down the orfang which is by the way the new citadel for the isengard castle and please let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the base difference now for isengard and the base difference for gondor again we keep improving that all the time and we will keep working on it all the time as well and that's why your feedback is essential so please let us know in the comments down below or in discord what do you think about the changes you know we can always adjust them we can always change them revert them we have many many possibilities and with your help we can make it to the best patch ever and you will have the greatest gaming experience ever in 2022 by playing the battle for middle earth one that's our goal and as you can see, we have also now the Ranger Summon. I was forgetting to talk about that uh, when, we, when we were able to summon them because I wanted to make sure, or we wanted to make sure generally that the summons are a bit more unique for each faction, you know? Now they are more unique because the only uh, summon which is identical between Gondor and Rohan is now only the Army of the Dead. So Rohan will get the chance to summon the Elven Elias and Gondor will get the chance to summon the Ranger Elias, which are weaker than Elven Elias, by the way because elves are tankier they have also the chance to switch to swords to deal structural damage while rangers are gonna be only good against units and uh, that kind of is okay i guess because gondor has so many powerful summons that it's okay if you have a bit weaker summon than the elven summon okay so we are doing a phenomenal job so far we dealt crazy amounts of economical damage we were able to capture both the outposts let's build a tower on both of these outposts just to have some more protection 
and we can just bail now uh you know and i wanna at some point we will make a full command points with tower guards and soldiers exclusively that is the plan ladies and gentlemen and of course no army after that is allowed no rohan no rohan allies no gandalf unfortunately no faramir no club break nothing like that and the only reason why i was summoning the rangers is just to show you guys that it is new and also what is new is the animation for the grand harvest and for the iron ore for the for the gondor faction you will see what i mean once we have purchased that now earlier you could not tell visually if this farm is buffed with the grand harvest or not now in the new patch 2.22 version 2 which you can download tomorrow from the link in the description down below you will also be able to tell visually that this upgrade is actually active for your farms and also if your opponent doesn't have it you will also be able to see that animation on the opponent farms oh my goodness man we have almost full map control that's crazy like this isengard has zero resource income we need to find a farm look at the farm now you see the animation guys the yellow glowing around the farm that's crazy right and we have the same animation for the blacksmith however however it's going to be like a white glow for the blacksmith let's buy the banner carry upgrade as well and of course the animation works for the inside and outside farms and for that reason in order to be able to keep the upgrades from the marketplace you need to keep the building also inside your castle so you cannot demolish the marketplace if you do you will lose the upgrades so don't <laughs> better don't trust me on that one one more barracks just to get a bit more faster units i believe money is not gonna be a problem in long terms because of the uh, glory of gondor from boromir the iron ore from the marketplace as well as the grand harvest we will you know have eventually lots of money let's use the captain of gondor to give them some levels one of them is almost level 10 let's give them all the upgrades we have so much money that's great we have double outposts lots of untouched farms outside you know we are looking good we are really looking good guys and i'm so excited about this patch and once the new version is going to be released hopefully tomorrow we will also open a league and a tournament for the bfme one so if you guys are interested in this kind of content please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also join the discord if you want to participate in this tournament which i should be announcing by the end of this week i would always like to see new faces in the tournament you know regardless of your skill level everybody is able to participate it's all about fun playing battle for middle of games in 2021 is nothing serious and nothing competitive it's just for fun you know and our purpose of making this patch is also to make the experience greater by having a more balanced and better looking gaming for battle for middle of one and i believe this game has lots of potential and i'm so happy with the current changes we have implemented and of course nothing is set in stone and we will always be able to revert the changes to adjust the changes to make it just overall to a much better battle for middle of one than it was ever before more 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 tower guards please we are looking strong we are looking good we are shining bright like a diamond i'm actually pretty impressed about the tankiness of the tower guards and once again you know the only problem here for the hard army is that he has no upgrades if this uruks would have blades and armor trust me on that one there would be a different story but he has no money why because we destroyed every single settlement from him he's poor you know we have 11 power points in the bank but we don't need them we don't need them look how tanky the, the soldiers are you know in the shield fall formation the alvin wood on the ground and they are of course high, highly leveled with heavy armor they are quite beefy please save this farm dude nice we will we are almost command points capped that's the plan to be command points capped with tower guards so we have left a huge army of the defenders of the white city and then we will run isengard down and what do you, i mean again guys please don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about the beast differences now with the new textures and of course we will also make sure that the buildings have new textures and uh, they have like a higher resolution more like a hd look and i believe you know i like the gondor castle now gondor castle looks better and also the same of course works for the for the gondor camp isengard camp mordor camp mordor now has baradur by the way 
which is not working under person now because of the animation of the rebuild is kind of buggy but i would still like to implement it in the new version and then we can because i believe it looks so you so unique you know now we have orphan for the isengard and baradur with the great eye of sauron for the mordor rohan is a really unique sitter anyway and gondor will be the only one who might be who might uh, which might get replaced for the for the future versions but i believe like having this baradur look in your mordor castle gives so much uniqueness to the mordor faction i like it and i hope you guys like it as well the new black texture you know the more saturational texture for the buildings i think they have done an amazing job and of course i have not done anything alone without a great working oh peregrine too no man this guy you know without gandalf he's nobody all right now we can run him down guys i believe this isengard doesn't stand a chance against the power of gondor there can be no victory i mean not really because it was mordor but mordor got defeated at the end of the day the power points are rising to the sky gandalf not needed paramir not needed gondonites not needed tower guards soldiers and boromir is all you need look at them glowing shining bright like a diamond and they are so beefy too they are so tanky he can tank those towers all day all night everybody everybody is in the shield formation by the way they are so slow let's a click them this way they will automatically attack their you know everything on their way to this point and the structural damage from the level 10 units is just kind of insane and with that being said gondor will be victorious ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this one if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe please because we are really close for the 16,000 subscriber mark it would be awesome with your help to reach the 16,000 subscribers by the end of this year i would really appreciate it guys hopefully i will see you also in my live stream on twitch uh, twitch tv slash beyond standards links are in the description down below until then stay safe keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out guys